Welcome to the solution of the pre-release material for 0478, paper 22 for May 2022. Okay, it's about the wildlife park tickets. Let's have a look at the description of the May 2022 pre-release material for paper 22. So it says, a program is needed to allow a wildlife park to sell tickets. A booking consists of one or more tickets for the same day or days and can be made up to a week in advance. A booking can be made for a visit of one day or two consecutive days. A booking can have extra attractions included. A booking will be valid for the days chosen only. Days chosen only. So we have five ticket types. We have a one adult ticket and we can have the cost for one day or cost for two days, one child, and also it specifies that an adult may bring up to two children. So if we have more than two children, we should have more adults or seniors. The family ticket type has up to two adults or three and three children. And we have a groups ticket of any six or more people, and that's the price per person. So we have to take care of that. Once they have chosen their ticket types and one day or two day, they can also have extra attractions and it's the cost per person. So of course, as usual in the pre-release material, write and test a program or programs for the wildlife park. Perhaps by programs, they mean we should have some kind of function or procedure. So I will try to include that in a later video. Your program or programs must include appropriate prompts for data of entry data must be validated on entry so any inputs we have should have a prompt and should have validation all outputs including error messages need to be set out clearly and understandably all variables constants and other identifiers must have meaningful names as cambridge always requires in this video we're going to be solving task one which is displaying the ticket options and the extra attractions available set up your program to display the options attractions and prices for one day tickets display the options attractions and prices for two day tickets show the days available for booking assume that there are tickets available for any valid day we'll also have a look at the requirements for task two process a booking so you're going to extend task one to input the tickets and extra attractions required and calculate the total cost with the tickets and the extra attractions allocate a unique booking number they might ask you about that in the pre-release questions display the booking details including the total cost and the unique booking number and repeat as required so here's the main code for task one but not including the date okay so like how many days are available for the wildlife park so these are the main 17 lines the first five lines are going to be about storing the data in the arrays so all the data that's given we have it stored about the tickets and the attractions so line one we have the ticket types we have five ticket types this is an array it's a one-dimensional array of type string again also in line four we have a one-dimensional array of type string as well talking about the names of the extra attractions then we have in line two and three and also line five we have one-dimensional arrays the cost of the one-day ticket and the cost of the two-day ticket and the extra attraction cost. Have a look at the first element in the cost of one day. This is 20.00. So this is the cost for one adult for one day. Now, if we look at line three, which is cost of two days array, the first element is 30.00. So that means that one adult costs $30. Okay, so that's the beginning of task one. Now in lines six to 11, we're printing the ticket type and the cost of one day and as well as the extra attractions you know if you're going for one day tickets there are two types of attractions and in lines 12 to 17 we're printing the costs of two days so any tickets that you're buying that are for two days what are the costs and also there are three extra attractions that are add-ons you can have if you're purchasing a two-day ticket so here's the output from those 17 lines. It shows you the two arrays, you know, the ticket type and the costs for one day. And again, the different ticket types available and the cost for two days and the different attractions if you're going for a one day ticket and for a two day ticket. 
Okay, now let's go on to task two. Let's just process a simple booking that's going to work if you're booking for adults and children. But this is not the complete task two. This is not going to work if you're trying to book for groups. Because if you're trying to book for, book for groups, we're going to have to add in extra lines, which will calculate the cost per person. Okay, so this is just the beginning. I will publish another video within a couple weeks about the real complete task two, inshallah. But this is really good practice if you just want to like start off with programming. Like if you haven't done any Python programming at all, which is very close to pseudocode, I definitely recommend that you go through these simple lines of code. So the beginning of task two, definitely this whole task is going to be inside a while loop. Okay, first of all, in line 18, we have booking number equals zero because we need to generate unique booking numbers. So we have to start them at an initial value of zero. And within that while loop, we'll increment that initial zero value to generate each time a unique booking number plus one, plus one, plus one. Line 19, print, welcome to the Wild Lily Park, okay? Now here's line 20 and line 21. In line 20, we have a variable called booking open. You know, input, would you like to book, yes or no? So is this whole program open for booking? Now, if they type yes, while booking open equals yes, then we will execute the statements inside the while loop. Remember from pseudocode, if you're having a while loop, you need to initialize. So the while loop is on line 21. <clears throat> you need to initialize the condition that it's based on, which is booking open in line 20. And also in, before you close the while loop. So before you start the while loop, you check is booking open still equals to yes. And before you end the while loop in line 41, you also check is booking open. You know, will you still continue booking yes or no? Now that we're done talking about the while loop, let's look at the statements inside the while loop. So the first statement on line 22 is saying booking number equals booking number plus one. We've generated a unique booking number. It's a counter that's for each booking. And now we're going to ask in line 23, number of days equals in input. Are you booking for one day or two days? Just type one or two. And then in line 24 and 25, we have a lookup validation. While number of days is not equal to one and number of days is not equal to two, so that means that the person didn't type one or two, they typed anything else like five or six. Then we're gonna say in line 25, num days is equal to in input error. The type, number of days that you've typed is incorrect. Please type either one or two. After that, after we've established how many days that they're staying at the wildlife park, in line 26 to 30, we're going to take the inputs of how many adults are coming, how many children are coming, how many seniors, how many families, and how many groups. Of course, over here, if we're going to add more lines to be able to calculate the cost if there are groups. But this program so far will be able to calculate the total cost if there's anybody except groups. So if groups equals to zero, this program will work. Now, if the number of days is equal to one, we can also ask them, okay, which day of the week are you coming? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So we can just write, or write this ticket is valid for that day. And we can tell them this total cost. The total cost is equal to the cost of one day of zero. Okay, so that's cost one day of the adult ticket because element zero tells you the cost for the adult ticket multiplied by how many adults are coming. Cost one day of one, which is the cost for a child on a one day ticket multiplied by the number of children plus the cost of one day of two, which will represent how many seniors are there multiplied by the number of seniors are coming plus cost of one day of element three of that array multiplied by the number of family members plus the cost of one day uh, four times um, number. But remember, that's not accurate. We will be changing that part of the code. So lines 34 to 36 will calculate the total cost if you've chosen to stay for two days, depending on how many adults, how many children, how many seniors, and how many families are going for that booking. Finally, lines 37 to 41 will print like which day of the week and these tickets are for this number of adults and children and seniors and families and the booking number and the total cost for that particular booking. And of course, line 41 will ask you, would you like to book again or not? Here is a sample output if you've done these 41 lines of code. So we've said yes to the booking system. We're staying for two days. We have one adult and we have four children tickets. Now remember, actually, we need to add more validation to this because you're not allowed to have one adult with four children and adults should maximum take two children. So we will be definitely uh, publishing another task two in a, within a couple of weeks. It is a lot more complicated than this. But again, if you do practice 
just these simple lines of code to get used to using arrays and calculating cost, it is, it's, good, it's a good start. So there was also one more part from task one, okay, but I'm still going to check if it's better to do it this way. I want to talk to other teachers and see what's their opinion. And this is showing the actual days that you can book. So you can import the date time, okay, import the date from date time library. And then you can use today is a variable equals date dot today. And that will give you today's date in the format, for example, you know, year, month, day. We also have, you know, y equals string of today. So I've taken that data type of date, I've turned it into a string and I've split it. So I split it into three parts, the current year, the current month, the current day. Okay, and I'm able to print the next seven days, including today, of when tickets are available. So I'm just going to have a check if we should use this in our final um, pre-release material or if we should just go with Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. All right, so stay, on, stay tuned for the next video, which should have a complete task one and task two. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments if you tried out this code. And if you have any ideas of what we should use, in, like according to the day and the group, how we should calculate the cost. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.